What's up, y'all? Back with Inside of Ties, episode 148. That's a lot of episodes, man. Getting close to 150. I think I have to do a giveaway or something at 150. Maybe. Maybe. Um, today's topic, if you notice right off the bat, down here underneath, below me, and it'll be in the comment section, it's my book, Nike's Consumer Direct Offense, Amazon and StockX, The Disruption of Sneaker Retail. You guys need to make sure you pick that book up, man, because it's a really good book, very informative, and a lot of the things that are happening in the sneaker industry right now I discuss in the book. And it's probably one of the few books that are out there that are like this. So get the book. It's down there in the comment section. Today's topic deals directly with information that's in the book. What I'm looking at is two different... Um, you're starting an online sneaker shop, or if you're starting a sneaker shop, if you're starting a retail store, brick and mortar, um, here's the thing. If you look over here to my side, you'll see the Kith website. And I'm doing this intentionally to show how smaller retailers are outperforming bigger retailers via e-commerce and via content and strong website development. Now, this week, Instagram launched a feature that allowed you to buy within the, buy, make in-app purchases, right? So we were having this conversation on LinkedIn about Instagram and in-app purchases. And I made this statement to someone. I said, look, Instagram is just another third party, you know, platform where you'll be able to sell something. But a week ago, Instagram went down along with Facebook. And what did all of these people do? They started scrambling, trying to figure out how they were going to reach their customer. At any point, Instagram can take the ability away from you to reach your customer. So what's the best way to reach your customer is to build a website that's beautifully crafted and has all of the content and information that keeps people on your website where they can buy everything that you have available. Brands, retailers are all overlooking their websites. Everyone is. And they're foregoing their own content and their own ecosystem to go and reach people where they are. But this is the thing. When you start doing searches and start looking for information on where most website traffic comes, where you can actually buy things, most website traffic comes from search. All right. And this is important for you guys that are starting websites, man, because it's hard to launch a website. It's hard to maintain. My website went down last week. It's very hard, man. So it's easy to sit there and sell to people through Instagram if you have the ability but you know what you're going to lose when you sell things through Instagram? You're going to use, lose margin. So let's take a look at the Kith website, and we're going to compare it to a bigger retail outlet. Kith has three locations, right? I think they have a Miami store now or a pop-up in Miami. I'm not sure. But I know they have New York and they have L.A. But they have three stores, and I think it's Miami. Yeah. And um, But their website is exquisite. And just in the last week, they've updated the website. So let's take a look at what they've done. You have your footwear, you have your men's section, your women's section, your kids' sections, then you have treats because Kith also has treats, right? And they have stores where they serve um, ice cream, uh, cereal, things like that. They are basically taking their stores and utilizing every single inch of space in the store and monetizing every single square inch. It's an incredible thing. Um, and then they have content. So on their website, you can go to content, you can click through, and they have lookbooks, films. People will go to this website simply to check out the information that they have available, and they do their own photo shoots. Now, I'm going to compare that to a small retailer with over 40 store locations. Remember, Kith has three locations, right? Their digital footprint is incredible. They're getting a considerable amount, amount, amount of web traffic. But let's look at a store chain called Eblins, who's in the Northeast. Eblins has over 40 stores. That means they have a considerable amount of inventory. Now, when we go through here, we click on Nike and we look to purchase something. Let's look at their store. There's no purchase. No purchase. Eblins does not have an e-commerce platform. Now, they're working on it. I'm pretty positive they're working on it. But you're talking, they have releases, they have all of this information. I click, and it gives me a store locator. 
This is a dangerous thing for a company that's brick and mortar, that's relying on cash customers because as cash customers become integrated into the digital society, all of those people that are on Instagram now, if Nike posts something and they can buy it from Nike and Nike can get that product to them safely, those cash customers may start buying on Instagram. The fact that people can buy on Instagram is not a good thing for brick and mortar stores like Eblins. It's not a good thing for brick and mortar stores like Foot Locker or anybody else. Yesterday, the conference call came out for Nike, right? And their quarterly report showed that they didn't hit a certain number in sales, but they also showed that they hit a billion dollars in their direct-to-consumer strategy for consumer direct offense. They hit a billion in consumer direct offense. Why is that important? Because they may not have hit this margin, right, for sales completely, but their margins increased on every item they sell because now they're getting directly to the consumer. Now that Instagram is going to offer Nike a chance to get those consumers, that's going to further cut into the growth of a company like Eblins when they decide to launch a digital platform. Now, how is Kith countering it? When we come back and we go back to the homepage of Kith, Kith actually has Kith clothing. They have private label. All of these things matter. It's really important. And I know a lot of people don't watch these videos because they aren't as engaging as the sneaker stuff that I put up. But these business videos, man, are vital to those of you who are looking at the industry and saying to yourself, where do I fit in? I'm making a call right now for every retailer to begin hiring content creators who are not just somebody that can wear a cool outfit. You need to start hiring writers, people who can create content consistently, marketing people who can do your storytelling. Every product that you have should have a beautiful photo shoot, but it should also have an article. That article is going to help you in search. All of these things are cumulative. It's not a quick hitting, here's the Instagram, and I'm going to sell on Instagram. You're going to lose margins when you do that. This is a long episode. I didn't want it to be this long, but I'm hoping you get what I'm saying. And if you don't, leave some questions in the comments, man, or on the website because I'm going to add this in both locations. Also, make sure you get the book. It's a great book, and I'm not just saying that because I wrote it and Tayeb wrote a couple of chapters in it. I'm saying it because it gives you a lot of the inside information on resale, the growth of the consumer direct offense, because I don't think anybody tracked it in the same way that I did. And it tells you all of the small things that I think need to be done to prepare yourself to survive outside of third-party marketplaces. That's it. Episode 148, I think. Yeah, that's it. I'll see you guys on the next one next week. Peace.